talk about this. We want to talk about facts about what can be applicable and practical to our people today for solutions. One, we they have laws that have given us human rights over civil rights. We are fighting for civil rights instead of human rights. That that's what we are doing in America. They already have laws that will protect you from human rights. You are identifying wrong. Why are you identifying wrong? You first you identifying by religions foreign religions, and then you're identifying by foreign names that the Europeans gave us. Two things we're identifying by. Why? Because you don't know your bloodline. The Torah is all about bloodlines. Nigga know Jesus' bloodline. Nigga know Moses' bloodline. Nigga know Adam' bloodline. Nigga know Abraham' bloodline. But if you ask a motherfucker what is their bloodline, they don't know it. So they can give you all this religious bullshit, but when you exit the tie into a bloodline and tie that bloodline to a landmass, you will not get that on no Aboriginal title. And that's the facts of the matter. That is the facts of the matter. I don't give a fuck about none of that other shit. This is the facts of the matter. You're being taxed because you're calling yourself black and African American. You can't go put no Hebrew down on no paper and think you're not going to be taxing them more. You can't use Hebrew Israelite for, for none of that shit, and that shit is going to put you in an indigenous status to where you have indigenous rights. Let's speak on what's practical and solutional, some solution-based shit for my people. You can't. You can't. You can't. The only way you get out of this shit is you backtrack your genealogy to a pre-colonial fucking nation and repatriate. The fucking solution is simple. You ain't gotta wait on no fucking um no white folks to do nothing for you. None of that shit. <clears throat> Show proof of the word. Fan of America. F-A-N-A is fucking, I think it's a confederation of five or six repatriated nations. Not not one person. Five or six repatriated nations that all researched their genealogy, predated it to pre-colonial times, and put themselves in superior jurisdiction. These people pay no taxes, and all their businesses are tax-free. This is what I'm trying to tell you, niggas. Taxes fund terrorism. Taxes fund terrorism. According to the Constitution, the Aboriginal people of America shouldn't be taxed. What is the Aboriginal people of America? The people that was here before colonization. How do you find out if you was here before colonization? You backtrack your genealogy. I'm giving y'all all the steps in y'all face because I'm dealing with these fucking chiefs who are showing me this shit in fucking living time. I'm talking about right now and today. I am dealing with these chiefs that are showing me this shit right now, today. This is not some shit that I'm, uh, some hypothesis, none of that shit. I'm watching fucking chiefs, uh, American Indian chiefs, practice this shit right now, today. They repatriated themselves back to their pre-colonial jurisdiction, tied themselves to their aboriginal tribes, and filled out their paperwork the way they need to be. They ain't used nothing from no fucking Christians. They ain't used nothing from no fucking Bible. They ain't used nothing from no fucking Torah. And this is facts. This is facts. So trust law is what gives us our jurisdiction. So the trust that the ultimate goal for every family is to have a private, foreign, aboriginal, tribal trust. Names, locations, and dates. That's what you get from your elders. Your names locations and dates shall be interpreted and enforceable accordingly by whatever law the trust says that it should be um, governed by that's what it should be governed by that's what this that's what this uh, convention is telling you that subjects to the provision of this act a trust shall be governed by its proper law and shall be 
interpreted and enforceable accordingly by whatever law the trust is. The proper law of the trust shall be determined in accordance with this act. The terms of a trust may provide for the proper law of the trust to be changed to the law of another jurisdiction. See how I keep telling y'all trust gives us jurisdiction. Article 5A of the Trust and what is it, Trust and Trustees Act confers the force of law in Malta to most other articles of the Hague Convention on Trust with the relevant provision, provisions reproduced as a schedule to the Act. We will analyze these in some detail shortly. Act 6, Act 6 of the Trust and Trustees Act then goes on to provide when the proper law of a trust is the law of Malta as the chosen applicable law of the trust or as determined in accordance with Article 7 of the Convention. Notwithstanding the provisions of any law, the validity of the trust, its constructions, its effect, and its administration of the trust shall be governed by this act and other provisions of Maltese law on trust. When the proper law, number two, when the proper law of a trust is a foreign law, has the chosen applicable law, applicable law of the trust, or as determined in accordance with Article 7 of the Convention, notwithstanding the provisions of any law, any other law, the validity of the trust, its constructions, its effects, and the administration of the trust shall be governed by such foreign law and shall be recognized and given effect to in Malta in accordance with the Convention and this Act. The administration of the trust may be regulated different from the proper law of the trust. Now, let me say this. I know people are hearing uh, the effects of the Malta. You can't go that way, but we are, what, what we are doing is we are, building, we are putting our own law into the trust. See how they say uh, the trust is governed by the law that is put in, inside the trust, which means when I tell you, when I put the post, have y'all ever thought about writing your own constitution? And when I tell y'all, y'all will need your own constitution and bylaws, meaning you will put all that inside your trust. So your trust will run off of whatever you put inside the trust. This is why it's private. You know what I'm saying? This is, I'm lining all this shit up for y'all. This is why it's private. Because it's time for me to kick this shit in the gear. All right, the Hague Convention. The full formal reference to the convention is Convention on the Law Applicable to Trust and on Their Recognition, adopted by the Hague Conference on Private International Law on the 20th of October, 1984, and which came into force on the 1st of January, 1992. No, the U.S. Constitution is a constitution inside of a trust. Just like your constitution would be a constitution inside of your trust. <laughs> same thing. It's the same thing, same concept. The United States is a, is a trust. And it's, it's, yeah, I'm glad you asked that question. Because whenever I get off of here, I was already thinking my next post off of here is going to be about the United States. And how y'all keep hearing me say trust and trustees. My next post, when y'all when y'all hear what the man say, y'all going to be like, whoa, what the fuck? I'm glad you said that. Remember that? It's the U.S. Constitution. Oh, it's the U.S. Constitution in a trust. Yes, my bad. I read that wrong. Yes, it is in a trust. Yes, yes, it's in a trust. No, the Moors practice this on a religious basis. What I'm teaching y'all is on a land, blood, tribal basis. It's different. I'm, what I'm teaching y'all is going to supersede the Moors and the fucking UN and the fucking Pope. The Moors still have, are under the Pope now. Because they're under religious jurisdiction. The Moors granted themselves religious jurisdiction. Not Aboriginal land, tribal jurisdiction. It's a difference. Bloodlines, them between a bloodline tie and a religious tie. And this is why genealogy is important because your genealogy is what's going to allow you to supersede the religious claim that the Pope, them, and the Catholic Church put on you. This is why your bloodline is so important and you being able to find out who you are because that connection to the land pre-colonial allows you to have a bloodline that supersedes colonialism. So being that you supersede colonialism, that means before they come over here with their bullshit, your family was already over you. 
So now your bloodline supersedes their religious claim because the Pope took all the world lands and people into a trust in 1302 by a religious claim. He didn't do that off of a blood claim. So whenever you come and make your blood claim by law, whoever is the oldest in time is the strongest in law. So being that you will have a blood claim to a pre-colonial time, that will make you the strongest in law. So whenever you make your claim, your claim will be the strongest and they can't rebut it. So which means you... It's us. We was everywhere. And so, this is what I'm saying. It's not just America that you have to trace your genealogy. It's no matter where your genealogy is. It's already in the records that you was there. You just got to go find your exact family and bring your family to whatever land, man, as you can bring them to before colonization. It don't matter. Where is that? Whatever land, man, as you can bring your family to before colonization. Bring your family to them. You know what I'm saying? No matter where it's at. If you go to your genealogy, talk to your elders. When you talk to your elders, get names, locations, and dates. That's what you get from your elders. Get names, locations, and dates.